This episode is brought to you by Shopify. Forget the frustration of picking commerce platforms when you switch your business to Shopify, the global commerce platform that supercharges your selling wherever you sell. With Shopify, you'll harness the same intuitive features, trusted apps, and powerful analytics used by the world's leading brands. Sign up today for your $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash tech, all lowercase. That's shopify.com slash tech. If the formula to becoming a consistently profitable trader is so straightforward and simple, then how come so many traders struggle to reach that peak? But before we hop into things, I want to say a big thank you for you guys supporting the show and everything that you do to keep this podcast going. If you're brand new, I know it can be intimidating, but don't feel like you have to go back and listen to all of the episodes. Take a browse to the playlist, find the topics that excite you, and give those episodes a listen. Question came in, said, Akil, am I sure if there's a Q&A today? Of course there is. Every Monday, unless uh, I'm ill or there's some type of holiday that I'm aware of. I'm not aware of most holidays. But not sure if there's a Q&A today, but I, would, I, I have some questions. I would love to listen to your opinion on this. And here's the first one. If the basic idea of consistently profitable, of a consistently profitable trader is to be able to read and analyze the market in conjunction with their personalized elaboration and strict following of an instruction with a positive return, basically means consistent analysis plus consistent execution, equals consistent results in trading something with the edge. Um, Why does a person's emotional nature ensure that something so um, calculated and repeatable and so unambiguous is not able to be easily executed? Uh, See results and strengthen one's own cycle of belief and ultimately leads to the failure of traders. Basically, the question is this, and I have this for you guys, right? The process to becoming a consistently profitable trader is pretty simple, right? You learn how to trade the markets. You develop or find a strategy that has an edge, a positive expectancy, something where the probabilities are in your favor. And if you consistently execute it, you should make money. And then the last part of it is just to consistently execute it, right? The the formula to success is pretty simple. So our trader is asking a question, Akil, if the formula to success is pretty simple, how come trading psychology gets in the way, right? And do you guys have any opinion on that? If we know what it takes to be successful, why do we self sabotage? Why do we do things or why do we allow ourselves to do things that we know will stop us from being successful? David says human biases. It's, it's funny, David. And uh, Bobby says the same thing. We are humans. We have emotions. Stuart says fear, greed, and patience. George says greed, fear. Uh, Steve says age old fear and greed. Yeah, this was the same exact answer that I gave. I'm like, I don't, I don't need a, a whole Q&A session for this. The, the, the answer is simple. Because we are human beings. <laughs> because we are human beings and it is human nature to be irrational. It is human nature to do the opposite of what we should be doing. I'll, uh, we won't get into a, a big thing on this, but I remember one of my favorite movies was The Matrix, right? You guys ever, you guys ever see The Matrix series or at least the, I think it was the first one? Matrix, the role Will Smith should have never turned down, right? One of my favorite uh, quotes in The Matrix um, is by Agent Smith. For you guys haven't seen it, The Matrix is like this. Um, I guess there's no spoiler alerts because it's been like, what, 20 years? I don't know how long it is. But to give a kind of a quick background on Matrix, The Matrix is this thing where we're living in this like AI created world. It's maybe coming sooner than later that we actually, you know, whatever like that. But we're living in this AI created world to give us this sense of happiness and whatnot. But in reality, human robots have taken over the earth and we're sitting in these pods and they're using us as food. And in the matrix, they kind of go into these different places and there's this bad guy called Agent Smith and he hates human beings and blah, blah, blah. And he refers to human beings as being a virus Right. We're thinking of Agent Smith, who is the computer simulated thing as being like a virus. Right. But he refers to humans as being as the virus. And he says, basically, humans do this. And, and it's he makes a good point. Humans have something. They consume something until it's destroyed. And then we go to the next place and repeat, just like a virus. A virus comes in, it, it destroys everything, and then it goes to the next place. And he, he's kind of right because we have this big, beautiful planet called Earth. Right. And we 
continue to destroy it, knowing that we're destroying it, knowing that we should probably stop doing certain things or start doing certain things to, you know, keep the planet alive. And what do we say? Nah, whatever. Nah, we're going to keep destroying it, right? Off of, you know, so it's the same thing. It is in human nature to make irrational decisions. Another example I gave is weight loss, right? This is a, a perfect example that a lot of people can relate to, except for David, who David didn't gain any weight over Thanksgiving, right? David, wish we were all like you, buddy. Um, <laughs> but the same thing with weight loss, right? We know how to we know how to lose weight, right? We know how to lose weight. It it it, it is a pretty simple formula, right? You eat more of the right things. You eat less of the bad things. You do consistent physical fitness, and boom, it's it's not really that hard, right? at least per the calculation. However, saying no to that big piece of carrot cake and cheesecake on Thanksgiving, saying no to the five cheese macaroni and cheese that your aunt makes, saying no to that ice cream dessert with uh, chocolate syrup and whipped cream, a little bit harder when it's right there in your face, right? Waking up six o'clock in the morning and uh, driving to the gym before work or going to the gym after you're tired from work and getting a workout in, right? Doing that last rep when it burns and your body doesn't want to do it and you don't really have to. Ah, easier said than done, right? And it's the same thing in training. It is much easier said than done. And, and I take this from experience of, of not only going through my own personal journey of trading, but you know, coaching and working with what hundreds of thousands of traders over my time, it, it, it's very easy to tell them exactly what to do. The percentage of people that actually do it is very small. Now, going back to the last part of this question, right? See the results and strengthen one cycle, right? This is what we need to do. So the solution is that that good old fashioned belief action results cycle, right? There's this three point cycle called belief action results, right? And it starts with belief. The more you believe, right? And this has to be manufactured because we don't have it at first. We don't have this belief at first. Even if you go through all the processes of back testing and strategy development, you still don't really believe it until you do it. But the more you believe in something, right, the more you start taking the correct actions, right? And then this is where the formula comes in, right? The formula is mathematical. So if you take the right actions, you're going to get the right results. But it starts with being able to have that belief, the encouragement, the motivation to take the right actions consistently and, and over time. But once you start taking the right actions, you start noticing that your results start improving. Once your results start improving, you start doing that thing like, man, like this stuff is working. Like, man going to the gym five times a week, you start seeing the results. I'm looking a little better in the mirror. It, it makes you want to do it even more or saying no to that second scoop of ice cream and only going with one instead of two, you start seeing the results and it makes you do it even more. Now you have more belief and then you get kind of addicted to that. You start seeing those results. You Ideally, you like the results. So now, instead of doing stuff that's going to self-sabotage, you're doing stuff that's going to get those results or you're doing stuff that you can now see and believe has been proven to get those results. And that becomes the new game. It's no different than we talk about process over outcome in trading where everyone wants the money, the money, the money, the money, the money. But we talk about winning, uh, you know, profitable trades aren't necessarily good trades and losing trades aren't necessarily bad trades, right? It's the process. And once you start following the process and you see that, man, like following this process actually makes me money. That's the result you want. Now you're, you're locked in on that process. You believe in it more and you start taking more of those right actions. So once you get that belief action result cycle going, that's how you kind of break the chain, right? You're stuck in this hamster wheel of sabotage and whatnot. You need something to break out of it. Um, and that's kind of the belief that allows you to do the right actions. Those right actions will get you the right results, assuming you've done all the, the behind the scenes work correctly. And then once you get those results, that belief gets even stronger and that whole cycle kind of breaks you out of that hamster wheel. So imagine a, a, you're running on this hamster, hamster wheel, it's on the little thing, and then you get enough momentum where it breaks out and now it starts scurrying down the road, your road to freedom and success and all your deepest desires. So that is, um, Stuart says, the biggest belief 
um, win I've ever found is surviving the first drawdown. Yeah, and, and it's it's small wins. Yep, it's small belief wins. It could be surviving your first drawdown. It could be, you know, the first time a, a, a trade goes against you and then comes back and works in your favor. Um, it, it could be many things, but you, you gotta you, you find those small wins, which are those small bricks, and you keep kind of putting them on top of each other, and they they build, they build, they build, and they grow, they grow, they grow, and as they grow, you grow as well. Hope you enjoyed the show. Good discussion topic as always. Do me a favor, share the show. We're continuously trying to grow the Trading Coach Podcast. That way, we can reach more traders, get more questions, and develop more awesome episodes just like this one so share it with your social community or share it with your regular in-person community as well if that thing still exists and uh yeah we can keep cranking out great episodes all right take care